A recent study set the internet on fire with talk about biological, self-replicating robots. But what sounds like the start of a dystopian nightmare future turns out to be a lot less worrying when taking a closer look at the actual science. Hi, I'm Ben, welcome to Spin Up Science, where we take a look at the science set to change the world and separate science fact from science fiction. On November 29th, CNN reported that scientists at the University of Vermont had claimed the world's first living robots were now able to reproduce. The so-called xenobots were synthetic organisms grown out of stem cells from frog eggs, specifically the Xenopus lavis, hence the name Xenobots. There's a lot of prospecting that these tiny creatures will be cleaning up radioactive waste or plastic from the ocean or delivering drugs inside the human body in no time at all. There is some really cool science going on, but there might be a little bit of overhype happening also within the media. The reality of these living, programmable organisms, which a superficial reading of most news articles on Xenobots makes it seem like the age of machines is upon us, like we should cross our fingers and hope that Neo wakes us all up soon, on closer inspection actually reveals what is reported by the scientific team behind the development is that one particular design of their Xenobots has been successfully engineered to create continuous copies of itself. That is, until it runs out of steam around the fourth generation, and also that it requires still some human help along the way. That is a feat though that is still absolutely amazing, and today I want to talk about exactly what is happening and how it works. What happened in these experiments is that these xenobots, Pac-Man-shaped synthetic organisms, move through a solution containing more of these sorts of cells in a way that collects a pile of individual cells in front of the organisms, sort of like a tiny biological snowplow. These cells then self-assemble to become a new organism of the second generation. By putting these second generation cells in a fresh petri dish each time, the process repeats itself and they collect enough cells to reproduce again. The most successful design replicated itself all the way until the fourth generation, until its offspring were too small to continue replication. The process is called kinematic self-replication, and it's a process that's been known to occur before at the molecular level, but it's never been observed at the scale of whole cells or organisms. The real innovation is how scientists have designed new synthetic life forms and programmed them to perform a behavior as specialized as replication. So let's dig in a little bit deeper to see how step by step they actually achieve that because it's super cool. The method used to engineer a novel synthetic organism was already described in a paper back in 2020. There's a link in the description down below. It goes something like this. First, scientists inject frog eggs with RNA to create a package of stem cells contained in an egg membrane. 24 hours later, the membrane is removed and the stem cells are extracted. Scientists will pipe these stem cells into tiny piles, which spontaneously would start to adhere into spheres of tissue a few thousand cells big. These spheres are then shaped by human intervention with microsurgery to produce a form and function as required by the cell bundle. Over then the next five days or so, these spheres of tissue organize to form a kind of skin around the outside, as stem cells can develop into any type of cell, in this case, skin cells. They also develop into other kinds of cells like cardiac tissue, which can contract in unison, allowing the organism to move, or they can create cilia, tiny waving hairs that synchronize their waving to provide propulsion. What's really important here is that the newly formed spheres show coordinated structure and function, in this case, locomotion. And now keep in mind that genomically speaking, these spheres are frogs because they are 100% frog DNA. Except clearly we're not talking about frogs anymore. The new life form is less than a millimeter in diameter, contains its own food stores that allows it to live in a standard freshwater environment for about a week before it runs out of energy and then slowly falls apart. At the University of Vermont Deep Green Supercomputer Cluster, a group used something called an evolutionary algorithm, basically a physics engine that creates and tests and reshapes possible Xenobot designs. They programmed it with a set of rules on how the extracted frog stem cells behave in real life, and the algorithm started by randomly assembling different shapes out of hundreds of different cells, and then simulated how well they did compared to some sort of performance metric, like how far they could move, or how quickly they could move, or how big of a pile of cells they could collect. Then the most successful designs were kept and randomly mutated for a new round of simulations. By doing this over and over again, the computer simulates thousands of different potential designs, always selecting the best, and that's why it's called an evolutionary algorithm. It's kind of like survival of the fittest 
in a computer. How it works in practice and to count as a living organism, the virtual designs had to come back out of the computer somehow, and that's where scientists at Tufts University went back to the petri dish and extracted those spheres of cells and started using those tiny forceps and electrodes to shape these spheres as close as possible to the best designs the algorithm had produced. It was this most recent study, this 2021 study, where scientists used that same method to design the Pac-Man shaped Xenobots that ultimately went on to make headlines. Where the unmodified spheres only managed it into the second generation, the modified design was able to produce copies up until the fourth. And now it's important here to be careful about exactly the definition of self-replication because those offspring of the Pac-Man shaped design didn't have the same shape without further surgical intervention by humans. So that's it. These Pac-Man shaped piles of stem cells are Xenobots. I want to be clear, this is very early stage technology. We're a really long way from these being ever useful to clean up radioactive waste or plastic in the oceans or delivering drugs to the human bodies. Uh, we don't know how it's going to work at all, actually. Today, Xenobots are something like the 1940s computer. Really cool, but still unfortunately without any meaningful application. But I would also say that's not really what this research is about. This research is about finding out what cells are capable of making besides their normal default body patterns. For that, these synthetic organisms are a convenient little sandbox platform for fundamental discoveries and basic research. The big question we're trying to understand here is how do cells cooperate to build complex functional bodies? And that understanding is still a little ways away. If you like this video, check out my other video on plastic eating bacteria. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.